Right then, how to build a fast soapbox slash gravity racer. It's the question burning on all of our minds, isn't it? Right, uh, this is what I've designed right here. It's designed uh, loosely on an H1 racer, which was an airplane built in the 1940s to do an airspeed trial. And it was the fastest in the world at some point. And it was built, <coughs> it was built by Howard Hughes. That's why it's called the H1 Racer. So this is called, this is my H1 Racer. Um, so, how to be the fastest? <whistles> Follow my little arrow along there. Uh, so you need to create the path of least resistance. Um, so how do you do that? Well, you start by creating low rolling resistance. Rolling resistance is the effort taken to turn a wheel going down a track. And a 20 inch BMX wheel, a 48 spoke wheel, would uh, appear to be the best kind of wheel because um, a small wheel has to turn too many times going down a hill. Imagine it's like a little trolley wheel, it doesn't really get anywhere. Um, and a, but you know, why not have a really big wheel? If you have a really big wheel, um, they're heavier, they, uh, they can collapse. When you go around a corner, they can all collapse and the spokes can come to pieces. But basically, anyway, done some research. And a 20 inch BMX wheel is probably the best wheel you can have. So you need to find some smooth, smooth tyres and high PSI. Nice smooth slick tyre, less resistance on the road. High PSI, something around maybe 100 PSI. I don't really know. This is all theory. By the way, yeah, this is all theory. So I haven't actually built anything yet. I don't actually know much about anything. But I, got, I can use a computer, so you know. I found out some stuff. Um, slippery racing bearings. So inside there, you need to get some nice um, new bearings and special grease, make it really slippery. Just search online which are the best ones. Um, make sure your brakes aren't sticky. If you put brakes on it and they're a little bit sticky, it could lose your speed and cause this friction. You don't want any of that rubbish. So make sure no sticky brakes. And non-buckled wheels. So. If you use a gravity racer a few times, I imagine, if you go over a few jumps and bumps, you knock all the wheel out of, out of line, out of true, and you just need to adjust it and make it straight, otherwise the wheel will be like whoa, 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 going down the road, and you don't want any of that. Um, so that's rolling resistance, you want to keep that low. Um, also, you don't want it too heavy of a wheel, because a heavy wheel takes more energy to get going, so you, know, you want a nice light wheel if you can, but also strong. Okay, I think I covered that. Oh, by the way, this is a drumstick duct tape to another drumstick as a pointer, but you know, it works, doesn't it? It's pretty good. Right, good aerodynamics. So meaning, so this thing looks nice and sleek and slippery, and the front end of the car is quite pointy and narrow, just like, imagine it's like a, a wing of a plane, but on its side. Um, but anyway, as long as it's got a small frontal area, so when the car is facing towards you, it needs a small frontal area, you know? you're not a bus, you don't want a bus going down there on big bits of cardboard or wood, you want it sleek like a Formula One car. Uh, and you need a low overall height, so get your body down, if you're sat in here, get yourself snugged right down in as low as you can possibly go. Um, the limit on my soapbox race that I'm going to do is 600 mil from the floor, so that's what neck my height's going to be. Smooth bodywork. Make sure it's nice and smooth, get a good paint job on it or polish it, sand it, I don't know what you're going to have on there, but just make sure it's slippery, you know, like the bobsleigh teams that you see them buffering their thing up before a race, that's to get, make sure it's nice and smooth, so the smoother the better, no jagged edges, plus you don't want to kill anyone with jagged edges anyway, and you want it to look good. Um, so you, it needs to be tightly fitted around the driver, so make the soapbox, if there's going to be one person in it, because it could be two, if there's one person in the soapbox, you know, I'm not that thin, but I'm going to make it tight around my body. Um, so I'll be there, the fattest part will be there, and that's where my belly goes, and then my feet down up in here, crushed into the front somewhere. Um, yeah, keep it small, keep it tight. And make it low to the ground as well. Lower centre of gravity is always better for any racing vehicle. Everybody knows that. Or so I think. Anyway. And downforce. Now here's a weird one. I think it's good to have downforce, but just like an airplane. So if you go around the left-hand corner, this wheel lifts up, 
because you're turning and all the weight goes to this wheel, if this flap here were to be able to go on demand, maybe on a joystick, um, and put more downforce just onto this side if you need it, then I think downforce can be useful, but only if you can turn it off again. Because if you've got lots of downforce all the way down, when you're on the straight, it'll be slowing you down. You don't want that. Uh, so, uh, what else are we going to do? Yeah, that's, that's aerodynamics. So, sleek, small, low to the ground, slippery, maybe some downforce in the right places. Um, yeah, so that's that covered. Okay, next, suspension and steering. You need good suspension. You need good steering. If there's jumps in it, number one, you want a spine left intact when you finish the race, obviously. So, yeah, you need suspension. If you, if you don't, then go for it, great. But, you know, I go to work and I, I go out landscaping and laying slabs, and if I break my back doing this, then I'm going to go work and this has to be bye-byes. So, um, good suspension is key. And also, when you go over the, if you go over any jumps, suspension helps you go through it smoothly, so the back end doesn't start dancing around the place like crazy, which you don't want. Steering, make sure you've got good steering, but make sure it's not too sharp, if you know what I mean. You don't want too much angle in it, because you know you see a lot of gravity racers come down over the hill, and they, they turn a little bit, and they just start going all over the shop, which is just, you don't want that. So try and make it so it doesn't steer too much. You, know, you don't want to do in a full, full turning circle just like this. You want it to be more like this for a full turn. Do you know what I mean? I think you know what I mean. Don't make it too jerky. Um, yeah, bad steering equals crashes. And you need good drivability. You need to be able to drive it how you want to drive it. Which brings me to my next point, which is the human factor. Now, this is important. Well... I'm not one to boast about safety or anything like that. I'm not. I'm not safe at all with most things, really. But if I'm, if I feel like I'm unsafe in this car, and if I roll over, I'm gonna like snap my neck. Then I'm gonna be a bit worried about, you know, going down there at speed. So if I've got a safe car, and uh, if I roll over, the metal there and the metal there will stop my head getting crushed, basically. And if I've got good brakes and it's safe, I'm gonna just go absolutely flat out down the track without worries, without hesitation, you know, it's important. So safety equals less fear, which equals a better driver, I guess. And if you're allowed to, a fast push start is very important. If you're allowed to push start, um, there's a film called Cool Runnings. Just watch that film and you just practice, <laughs> you practice how to push start. If you get a good push start, that give, it, it continues all the way down the hill. A fast start equals a fast race and a, and a fast time. Um, driver skill, if you can, practice. Build your soapbox racer and, um, and practice. Get down a few hills, you know, don't upset too many people. You know, you don't want to kill anyone whilst you're practicing it, but, um, you know, just have a, have a, maybe go to the hill you're going to practice on and have a few goes down. Make sure it's well built. And I'm not saying this is going to come out looking exactly like this, but, you know, I'm going to try and build it to the best of my abilities, make sure everything's straight, because um, the better you build it, the better it's going to be, the faster it's going to be, the more chance you've got to win in the race. And maintenance, after each time you race it, check the car, check everything. Check the wheels are straight, check the brakes are working, check the seat is still strapped in, check everything. And give it a nice buff as well, clean that baby up, make sure she's nice and pretty, and she'll go down there better every time. You look after the car, she'll look after you. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the next part. Weight. Now it's a big, big decision with weight because do you put more or do you put less? It seems that there's no real definite answer, but I made this little rhyme at the end uh, which might help you out. So if the track is straight, add the weight, but if it's windy, load it lightly, meaning a straight drag race down a hill, a heavier car will win the race. That's pretty definite. It's like, say you have, say you have two balls, and one, one's a lead ball and one's an air-filled ball. Drop them at the same time, the lead-filled ball will hit the ground first. Same, uh, same theory. But if the track's windy, um, just the same as a lead ball, when you go around a corner, it's going to slosh one way, and it's going to slosh the other way. And you'll get lots of scrub. You'll get the, the car will try and veer out in each corner. So if it's really tight, 
and keep it light.